It's now my pleasure to introduce Michael Strickland, one of our Arkwright ambassadors. He's a postgraduate researcher in orthopedic biomechanics, studying at Southampton University. Thank you, Sean. I'd like to begin by posing you a question. What does great engineering look like? Now, those of you who are here this morning will know the answer, so no shouting out. But I would like to suggest that it's something like one of these. This is a femur or thigh bone. Everybody in the room has a couple. You use them every day as you walk around in day-to-day -day life. I think this has a lot to tell us about great engineering. I'll tell you why in a moment. I was an Artwright Scholar some 10 years ago, um, awarded my scholarship by the Dulverton Trust. So I know it's a personal thanks to you, Chris, on their behalf, and um, from all the former scholars, in fact, um, thank you to you, the sponsors, for taking the time to recognise and acknowledge the achievements of ourselves those many years back. And in no small part, one of the reasons I'm here is because of that acknowledgement, that recognition, and the encouragement that that was to me personally. So thank you. Um, in that time since then, I've been at Loughborough University as an undergraduate and now I'm with the Orthopaedics Biomechanics Research Group at the University of Southampton. Bioengineering, if you're not familiar with it, sits at the interface between engineering, where everything is clean, everything is neat and tidy, and we know exactly how things work, and biology, where frankly we don't really have a clue. It's messy, it's confusing, and it's very interesting to work with. As bioengineers, we bring our tools, our methods, our techniques, and our expertise from engineering, and apply it to biological problems to try and understand biological systems as pieces of engineering and see if we can't improve and fix them when things go wrong. Our specific area of research is orthopaedic biomechanics. What that means is joint replacement, hips and knees. So you may have seen one of these. This is staple fare for us. This is a standard knee replacement. You may well have a relative, a grandparent, a nephew, uh, sorry, an, an uncle or aunt who has one of these. Um, Thousands of these are done every year, and it really is a fantastically simple idea to resurface the joints. But the difference it makes is massive for people. If you look at this component, this is maybe worth about £2,000. The surgery to implant it with computer assistance and image-guided navigation is maybe £20,000. But you can't put a price on the difference that makes to someone's life, giving them freedom of motion, giving them freedom from pain and the ability to do things they've not been able to do for years. That's real engineering making a real difference in real people's lives, and that's what this game is all about. So what do we do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, on the next slide you'll see the kind of things that we get involved with. This is classic engineering, but with a twist. You can see in the top left up there, robotic knee simulations. We load in our components, our partially dissected legs, and we see what happens as we put them through, testing the kinematics and the performance. Down in the bottom right, you'll see something more technical where we're doing computational modeling. We're trying to understand how well these components will actually last in vivo when we implant them in the body. So we're doing finite element analysis, we're measuring the stresses, we're looking at long-term performance. It's challenging stuff. We're working with a very complex system in the human body. It's sometimes frustrating, it's sometimes exasperating, but we're making real progress towards improvements, and that's incredibly rewarding. Working in this area has given me the opportunity to travel the world, to partner and liaise with people in different countries, world-leading institutions across in America, to meet some incredible people who are so knowledgeable and specialist in their area and have real insight on the world and the way that we as people work, to play with some fantastic equipment. Some of these simulators and some of these pieces of kit really are world-class and it's fantastic to get time hands-on with those. There's definitely perks to the job. You will be looked after if you choose to be engineers because you're valuable people. The world needs engineers more than it ever has before. There's a raft of problems out there which are crying out for talented young people to find the solutions. Energy crisis. How are we going to supply ourselves with electricity in an age past fossil fuels? Global terrorism. How do we develop effective counter-terrorist measures to mitigate that threat? The shortage of oil, what will we do when it runs out? Who's going to be powering our cars, our transport, our infrastructure? Climate change leading to difficulties feeding an ever-growing population. Who's going to be irrigating those crops, transporting them, and leading the way to make sure we can feed our world? And weather changes as well. Um, that's the picture from um, New Orleans recently. A tremendous example of how the world is changing and the demands on us as a society are changing. So, a changing world, desperate needs needs great engineering. What's that got to do 
with one of these? Well, you may think of bones as quite dead and quite static, but in fact they're tremendously dynamic, they're living, they're changing all the time. Every day, as you're walking around on your bone, you're loading it, and the way that you load it, the activities that you do, are changing it. It dynamically adapts to reshape and remodel and rebuild itself depending on the activities you do. Load it heavily, running or playing sport, and it becomes denser and stronger and harder to withstand the loads and meet the changing demand. Unload it, and it becomes less dense to be more lightweight and more efficient. The example I use is an F1 car. If this were an F1 car, it would be optimized. Every component in there would be perfectly tuned to balance strength and weight. But if that F1 car drove off-road, it would no longer do the job. Whereas, if that F1 car were like a human bone, it would change, it would modify itself, it would transform into a rally car and automatically rebuild itself to face the changing challenges. I call that masterful. I call that world-class great engineering. And that's exactly what this does. And I think that's what we need, and that's what we need to look for. So to every one of you, I'd encourage you, what will you look like if you want to be the great engineers of tomorrow? I think you need to be ready to change, ready to adapt, ready to look at the challenges in a world that has desperate needs out there, and come up with new solutions, reimagine the way that we use technology, the way that our society thinks, the way that we go about business, to change, to transform, to reimagine a world that is ready for the challenges of the future. Those fantastic names that they read out there, people like Frank Riddle, fantastic technology for its time, but now the world is changing. We can't depend forever on jet fuels for those jet engines. So how do we reimagine, how do we adapt, how do we change for the next generation? And that's the challenge I want to put to you, because you have the opportunity to get on board now with science, engineering and technology and answer some of those questions, adapt and change the world we live in and become the great engineers of tomorrow. I hope that's an encouraging thought. If you'd like to know more about bioengineering, please come and talk to me afterwards. I'd love to tell you a bit more. But I hope that you go away from here feeling that there is a tremendous challenge out there that you can play a part in solving a meeting in the 21st century and becoming our next generation of great engineers. Thank you.